Welcome to the first video of the space module. If this is the first video you've watched in the whole YouTube channel here, you probably would have noticed these pretty hopeless drawings. You will have to get used to those drawings because I do draw a lot and I'm pretty hopeless at drawing. But I try to use these drawings to maybe make a point which I would love to make better with better drawings. But this is as good as it gets. Alright, so what I'm trying to say here is we've got two people. So this might be you. And this might be one of your friends. And let's say you're playing tennis ball catching, right? So the game is simple. You've got a tennis ball, and you're meant to throw that tennis ball, and you are meant to catch that tennis ball. But because you're a bit clumsy, your catching skills aren't up to par. So what happens is your friend throws it. You are meant to be catching it, but you don't catch it, and you get it slammed against your face, right? And most of those times, especially if your friend is throwing that ball quite forcefully, there's going to be a bit of pain happening here, right? So it's going to be a painful collision. And the reason why is because force equals mass times acceleration. That tennis ball has mass, right? It might just weigh 200 grams, but it still has some mass. And it also will have some acceleration, especially if your friend is throwing that ball quite hard because he's got his decent biceps, right? Those biceps will make sure that there can be more for acceleration generated and that will create bigger force. So in this case, we, he has, you know, a certain acceleration because of the actual um, biceps plus the actual mass of the tennis ball will create a relatively painful collision so the force will be quite high. That makes sense right because he's obviously throwing at you and then the force would be expected but why would a tennis ball being sort of rolled off a plane hitting you on the head why would that create pain? Uh, first of all, obviously, I don't know why a tennis ball would roll off a plane, but I'm just trying to kind of use an example that kind of illustrates the point. So this tennis ball is not being pushed, right? This, it just rolls off the actual plane, but it's landing on your, your head. And it, in most cases, I should be expected, that will also cause pain. And maybe even more pain than if the, if the other person throws it at you. So why, if there's no throwing action involved, why would there be pain? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, because it's all about force equals mass times acceleration, but in this case, the acceleration which produces a force is not coming from the action of the arm, but from something called gravity, or a gravitational field. Because hopefully when you're actually playing that sort of ball game, you'd be standing on Earth, not in, somewhere in space, which means you would be subject to the gravitational pull from the Earth itself. So you can imagine there's some gravitational pull coming from the Earth, and that's pulling down that tennis ball, is pulling on the tennis ball towards you, and that's where the acceleration comes from, right? So acceleration, that ball is experiencing acceleration because it's in the gravitational field of the Earth, and thereby it's being accelerated. So then gravity from the Earth times the mass of the ball still remains the same. That will cause a force, and that force will be experienced on your head once it drops on your head. And also interesting, the higher the up it is, the more painful it will be, but we'll talk about that in a future video, and that future video will be probably video 4 and 5 of this module. But for now, we'll just focus on two things, weight and gravity, because the dot point says define, that's the verb in bold, define weight as the force on an object due to the gravitational field. Right? So this gravitational field is making this object produce a force because it's making it accelerate. That's basically what that means. But I'll go through a bit more in terms of a couple examples. First of all, just a pretty general um, statement. And this statement is quite important. Any object that possesses mass, so mass was something in grams, produces its own gravitational field. So obviously, I mean, Earth itself, that's fair enough. That's pretty straightforward. The Earth has a relatively high mass, right? So it's, it's very heavy, or it has a high mass. And that means that it will have a gravitational field, which we can experience every day, right? If we throw in a ball in the air, it will come back down. It will not just keep going straight. The reason why it comes back down is because the Earth has its gravitational field, which pulls things back down. Where does it pull it down to? It pulls it down to the center of the Earth. So you can imagine all these lines, they meet up at the center. Now this picture is a bit misleading because it kind of suggests that the center of the Earth might be at some point on the surface of the Earth, maybe, maybe in Australia or England. I don't mean that. What I mean by center of the Earth is the core of the Earth, right? So inside of the Earth. So if we had a ball and there were no uh, land mass, there was no lava, the ball would actually drop all the way to the core of the Earth. The reason why it doesn't is because 
there's basically uh, forces which prevent it from getting there. Otherwise, it would drop all the way to the center of the Earth. So we have these objects being attracted to a center of, an ob of an another object. Right? In this case, if we're talking about the Earth, we're talking about the core of the Earth, because that's the center of the Earth. But because of the statement here, any object that possesses mass produces its own gravitational field, that would pop up an interesting question. So do you actually produce a gravitational field? Because according to that definition, according to that statement, you do. And that's actually very much true. You actually produce your own, your own gravitational field because you have some mass, right? So we'll talk about that more in the next video. But um, obviously, one of the reasons why, for example, the Earth is not attracted to you as much as you are attracted to the Earth is because a different amount of mass is involved, right? So you have a mass of maybe 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 kilograms, whereas the Earth has a higher, much higher mass, which means it has a much higher gravitational field. But you do actually produce your own gravitational field. So there's an attraction. You are attracted to the Earth, and the Earth is attracted to you. But just the difference is quite big, right? Because the Earth is so massive that the impact it has on you is much more than you have on it. But all of this, what I just mentioned, is shown in this formula, and I should have not done that. I'm just going to erase this. And we'll talk about this formula much more in the next video because it's to do with the law of universal gravitational attraction. So force equals a gravitational constant, which we'll cover in the next video, times mass, so your mass, times mass of the Earth, for example. So there's two masses always involved when it comes to attraction between two, two objects. It's basically the masses of those two objects. Divided by the distance squared. So the further is away it is, the less force will be exerted, the less attraction there will be, which makes sense, right? So further two objects are away, the less their actual attraction. But it also, interestingly, it's squared, which means there is, it's, if you have one squared or 10 squared or 100 squared, basically the further it gets away, the much weaker it gets. And that's something that we'll also cover briefly in the next video. But that's just a hint towards the next video. In this video, what I want to talk about is we define the weight as a force on an object due to a gravitational field. So weight is actually, first of all, a vector quantity because it can have a direction, right? Weight is, a, as opposed to scalar, mass would be a scalar quantity because it has no direction, whereas, whereas weight can, can point somewhere, can point up or down. And so is gravity. So gravity is also a vector quantity because it comes from acceleration and acceleration is a vector quantity, right? So, for example, if we look at the weight that a 70 kilogram person would have, right, so mass would be 70 kilograms, I can tell you the gravi gravitational attraction of the Earth onto, that, that, onto you or whoever that 70 kilogram person would be, would be 9.8 kilograms, uh, sorry, 9.8 meters per second per second. And this would be a vector quantity, which means it has a direction. Often we say downwards, which means it's actually going down, which makes sense, right? I mean, it's pulling you down, so it's downwards. Or sometimes you can also see people um, writing a minus there. And that's the same thing as saying downward, because it has a direction and a quantity, a magnitude and a direction. Right, so if we say weight of a 70 kilogram person, it's their mass times acceleration, or in this case, gravity, which is the acceleration that a gravitational field produces. And we would have a Newton of 686. Now, I didn't calculate that quickly in my head, but it's pretty straightforward because many times you can say 9.8 is almost 10, so you can do 70 times 10, but I've done that beforehand. But the idea is that basically that, that, this, that you are experiencing a force of 686 Newtons from the Earth itself, right? because the Earth is producing a force using its gravitational field that's, that is also taking into account your actual mass. That was what the dot point is all about. We need to define weight as force on an object due to gravitational field. So more or less, if you know this equation, that's one equation to know, you should also get out of this video that every single object produces its own gravitational field, which will be important, especially for the next video. You should know how to calculate um, mass times gravity equals your weight, right? that's also important. And you should know that, for example, mass is a scalar quantity, which means it has no direction, it just has a magnitude, whereas weight is a vector quantity, which means it has a mass, sorry, it has a magnitude, and it also has a direction. So for example, if someone says you weigh 70 kilograms, your weight is 70 kilograms, they would actually be incorrect. Your mass is 70 kilograms, 
whereas your weight would actually be 686 newtons. Um, but most people don't say they have a weight of 686 newtons. That's just kind of a misconception. But we'll talk about more of all of these concepts in the next video, but hopefully that was useful.